From our world headquarters in New York, Bloomberg Surveillance, no introduction necessary. The pride of Fordham University, Mario Gabelli, good morning. Good to be here. Where's the value in the market right now? Which sector is the most attractive? Well, we don't, we look stock specific. So yesterday when you saw Marvel. They, hold on, stop right there. That is a breath of fresh air. Everybody else goes, we don't talk stocks, we only talk sectors. It's a pleasure I'm to sorry, have you. I'm sorry, did they say sex or sectors? Well, that too, but we can't go there. But it's nice that you talk stocks. Give us a stock or the place where the most value is? Well, I don't know where the most value is, but on the other side of the coin, what we're looking at are things that will work over the next three to four years. Right. As in a simple example, the U.S., the capital markets around the world, Tom, are $60 trillion, $60 trillion of fixed income, and today it's about $36 trillion of equities, $100 trillion. So who manages that money? So we look at a beat-up company like, like Mason, 165 million shares. The stock's 28. The symbol is LM. And they've got a new management team in. Uh, uh, Mark Ferdick is doing a pretty good job. The balance sheet's in terrific shape. Earnings are a dollar this year, going to $2, going to $4. So we like that over the next couple of years. And that's an example. But we also look at things like Boeing. Is Boeing going to come in and produce the Dreamliner? Today, the head of their commercial aircraft business was kind of retired. Yeah, he was retired. And so the question is, is that a signal that their problems are over? Or is it a signal that their problems are just continuing with regards to this aircraft, an important part not only to the company, but also to the U.S. economy, to the U.S. competitiveness, but to the vendors? One company we like, one company we like is Precision Cast Parts, PCP, yeah. a vendor to Boeing. The stock is trading at about 90. It's got 140 million shares outstanding. This company will have $40 in cash and $10 in earnings in four or five years. So you're years. buying precision cash yes, parts now? Yes, as, no, as a way to play Boeing. Okay, I want to... Okay, uh, this, this is even though another story we have this morning is uh, Monsieur Galois, who runs Airbus, saying, you know, business is really, really bad. And we're only going to sell about half the planes this year that we had planned. Yeah, that's true. But look at the number of aircraft in the world. There are 19,000 planes flying. They're getting older, like some of us. They're getting uh, functional obsolescence. And you're going to scrap about 20,000. 20 years from now, you're going to have growth in the world. You're going to have to have 30, 35,000 aircraft flying. So, yeah, short term, it looks ugly. And financing is ugly. But what happens beyond that? And what happens beyond the next 12 months? And that's what we look for. When you look at this, Mario, uh, and you look at the different stocks out there, you are associated. I go back to your Gabelli Equity Trust. It was a closed-in uh, fund that was a sweet deal with that. What was it, a 40% discount at one point? And you said, to hell with that. You were going to boost it up. as was an 18% discount. I was kidding there. And you really brought that. You were one of the leaders on that, uh, bringing these silly discounts back on closed-in funds. Uh, you, have a, you have a good recollection, Tom. But ba basically, this fund in 1987 was one of the few that came out and did a closed end fund at that vintage, yeah. and then with the market pullback, it went to a discount, right. and we took a lot of initiatives to try to narrow the discount to the NAV. Well, you led the way on that. That was associated with cell phones, wireless, media. Do you still like that space? Well, we do. We think the global marketplace for wireless is consolidating, and even though the United States is saying, hey, let's look at what's going on with Verizon and AT&T with the issues over what right. Google and iPod, the answer is that on a global marketplace, deals are occurring. Uh, uh, for example, Barty in India was uh, was buying uh, MTN and uh, trying to merge with them. Uh, Oriscom, which is an, uh, an Egyptian company. And in the United States, we have a company called U.S. Cellular. Six million customers. We think they are the one that is going to be the target of someone's lovemaking, assuming the government... Uh, I understand scale and critical mass on a global basis. That's symbol USM. Right? USM, the stock's yeah. around 36 7 It was down a dollar and a half yesterday. Yeah. And it's owned by the Carlsons, uh, and uh, they own 80%. You've had an interest in media over the years. I wanted to ask you about the New York Times, just to get us started here. We've seen them sell television, magazines. They've got their stake in the Red Sox and a TV uh, cable operation up in Boston up for sale. What do they do when the only thing that's left is the newspaper? Uh, at that point in time, uh, they'll have to run an obit on themselves. <laughs> you know, the newspaper itself, you know, we always thought that the beach, the bedroom, and the bathroom were the places for the newspaper, but nobody wants the, the paper anymore. They want news, and they want it analyzed, and they want the Tom Friedmans of the world to give them the data, but 
they wanted a different way. They wanted instantly. What's the future of newspapers? It's an evolving dynamic, but more fundamental, where's the revenues coming from? Classified is gone. I mean, yeah. it's gone digital. So can they migrate into digital faster than they can lose? And then they have legacy costs. Newsprint, unions, mm. those are issues that are very challenging. And uh, now, looking at a different way, where does media go? There's an industry that's six hundred billion dollars in round numbers that derive the demand from advertising. And is Procter and Gamble globally going to do well? Are the Chinese going to be wanting uh, want to advertise? People would argue years and years ago that can that no Walmart wouldn't advertise. Well, the Walmart is advertising. I just visited with uh, Interpublic Group yesterday, and their chairman and um, uh, Roth, and the stocks, you know, five or six dollars. Advertising will come back. It'll lift a lot of ships. Then what share of that advertising goes to what media? So when we look at companies like Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, they do receive demand from advertising. So I'd rather have investors buy Time Warner at $28, Viacom at $25. We think earnings will improve dramatically over the next three or four years as the global consumer comes back. So instead of focusing on the New York Times, yeah. We'll focus on other ways to make money. Well, do we want to buy ad agencies, too? I don't have a problem with that. I think uh, into public at $6, uh, you know, Omnicom, uh, companies like that we're interested in. Interpublic public uh, is intriguing to us. That means we're well, buying it. I don't but know if we have a theme here, but uh, you know, two of the things you've mentioned are uh, uh, Lake Mason, money manager. No, they're uh, discrete dynamics. They're totally independent events, each one having certain unique circumstances. Yeah, but they both basically are in the interest of passing money through themselves and kind of dipping their beak, right? God, and you know, then, really we, then, we, then we should talk about Steve Wynn. Creative yeah. judgment, intellectual property. Uh, you know, uh, think about uh, in 1900, uh, 110 years ago, we made things, okay? We were railroads, we were oil, we were steel. In the 1970s, we were hamburger flippers. You know, we were buying... Uh, McDonald's. And today, think about Google. Sergey Brim, Larry Page, Eric Schmidt, what do they do? It's intellectual property. And uh, that's the part that we have to protect. Creativity changes. Mario, stay with us. We want to have you back just in 30 seconds here. Are you optimistic on the American experiment? Forget about stock picking. Forget about the Gabelli, the, all the five-star funds. Are you optimistic about the recovery of America? Well, you know, it's, uh, if we're talking about freedom, and we're talking about a free market system, and we're talking about the ability of individuals, men and women, mm -hmm. to express their point of view and to have a meritocracy. How could I not be? I mean, you know, basically, uh, I personally have lived that experience. I think American ingenuity, well, creativity. I yes. want to come back and talk about education with Mario Gabelli. It is. Oh, with us, Captain Value. I mean, no, it's Mario Gabelli with us. We saw a deal yesterday, Disney, Mar Marvel, you know, the whole thing. And, and Rich Greenfield over at Pally says it's just they need boys. Uh, what do you take away from all these deals we're starting to see? I think basically the theme that I'm preaching is that you look at deals over the last 50 years. In the 60s, it was the conglomerates. You wanted to smooth the cycle. In the 80s, it was, you know, Mike Milken and lazy assets energized them. In the 90s, it was another theme. Uh, today, it's global growth. So companies like Disney that are now feeling more confident about their liquidity, about their currency, they are doing transactions. Then you have a company yesterday, a bigger deal than Disney, but not as uh, populist. Yeah. Uh, and Baker the oil Hughes. Baker Hughes yeah. buying BJ right. Services. And what that did was to lift the value of all companies in the pressure piping. For example, we own Rollins Energy Services, 100 million shares. The stock is RES. Stock went from eight and a quarter to nine and a quarter yesterday as a sympathy move. And I think that stock is a double over the next five years. Why? Because we're going to find and use technology to get natural gas out of the the areas that we know they exist. Mm. When you look at these two deals, Mario, does it tell us where we are sort of in the cycle here? I mean, is it an indication that assets are still really cheap and credit is starting to get available? And well, so uh, it's, uh, it's a fairly yeah. narrow window here? Can, it is not a narrow window. It's the beginning of a new round of transactions that will take place. As long as we are in a free market system which allows capital to flow its, to high its return, Companies will do deals. Some will be dumb. You know, eBay bought Skype. That wasn't dumb, but it, they couldn't figure out how to make it work. Disney will find Marvel was a no-brainer. I mean, it was a tuck-in. $4 billion is not a big deal for a company the size. Uh, 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 you know, they do $7.5 billion of EBITDA. So for Disney, it's a non-event. 
for uh, BJ Services uh, being bought by, uh, that was a, a transaction that fit like a glove. You're going to see a lot more of these. Where? I mean, we've Our seen globally. media, we've seen oil services. Oh, you'll see, you'll see them in the, uh, some consolidation of the food industry. For example, when Mars, a private company, bought Wrigley's, they positioned themselves to be a global powerhouse in the confectionery, $140 billion industry growing at 2%, 3% a year. Nice global growth. Well, it leaves Cadbury... It leaves Cadbury and Hershey's kind of looking for partners. So you look for this, this equilibrium in the marketplace, okay? And then when, for example, Anheuser-Busch merged with An InBev, that allowed uh, Modelo, which uh, makes Corona beer, and Constellation Brands, which is Rob Sands, it allows them to say, hey, who's going to be our partner? So we look for these kind of dynamics. And then you have little tuck-ins like Hurley Industries, what we like, where right. uh, somebody will buy it. we got only a minute left. Never enough time with Mario Gabelli. Out of the Bronx, Fordham University, Columbia. You're on the board at Boston College, et cetera. You've taken a lot of money out of Gabelli, some heat on that. What's going to happen to Wall Street if we limit compensation? Uh, basically, uh, we are, everyone limits compensation if you make money for the customer. If you make money for the customer and then you make money for the firm, somebody has to figure out how to get paid for doing that. And that's part of the, the system. Uh, clearly, we also have to pay taxes. Some of the hedge funds that have offshore deferrals, some of them that convert uh, or, uh, their earnings into long-term capital mm -hmm. gain, that has to change. That has to change. But you're saying don't limit compensation on the trading desk or on the fund desk? Uh, I, you know, one has to be realistic, okay? Uh, I don't want it limited. I, we want LeBron in New York. We, I don't care what he makes. I don't want to limit his compensation. I hope the Dolans, instead of buying another newspaper, will uh, be very focused on buying LeBron. Uh, David Stern would like it. I would like it. And all us New Yorkers would like to have the Knicks back. How do the Knicks look this season coming up? Uh, it's painful? It's, no, it's exciting. We got to get Mario Gabelli and Barry Ritholtz in for an all Knicks hour. There we go. Mario, my, my in-laws in Cleveland were listening to that. I know. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? I've got a guy that grew up in <laughs> Cleveland working for me. He went to Case West and he strangles me by his looks every time uh, I mention that. Mario Gabelli, thank you so much on value of those particular stock ideas, particularly that 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 idea we heard uh, on um, I forget it now. PCP Precision Cast Parts. Well, there's a whole bunch of companies like yeah. that, and you've got John Cassessa coming up, and we'll talk about you know cash for clunkers and uh, yeah, but you. You analyzed autos when the Model T was around. Mario Gabelli, thanks so much. I, I did it when the horse.